All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Everything College World Podcast. Today I'll be doing Baylor versus BYU. Preview and prediction for this week two ranked matchup. BYU three-point favorites, 53.5 is the over-under. 10.30 p.m. Eastern time, late kickoff for this one on ESPN from Lavelle Edwards Stadium in Provo. Series history, Baylor leads 2-1, winning last year 38-24. Looking at the Bears' offense, you know, how will Blake shape and perform in this hostile profile environment is a big thing to watch. You know, he's showcased great poise, great command. Uh, you know, last year allowed him at the end of the season to earn the starting job here that saw Gary Bohannon transfer out. You know, he had a phenomenal effort in the Big 12 title game last December. You know, he was 23-28 in that game, you know, completing 82% with three touchdowns. There's a stretch where I think he had like, you know, I don't know, 15 straight completions to start the game or something. So he was great. Uh, he showcased the same in the two games before him that he got to start in. Uh, you know, the numbers are not too eye-popping, but still is. He had to throw an interception in his career, seven touchdowns, no picks. Uh, you know, he had 200-plus yards in the debut as well, 214 last week, completing 85%. He also ran for a touchdown. So Blake Shapin, he's got a lot of nice raw characteristics. Uh, you know, he's, he's kind of undersized, though. He says six foot, 200 pounds. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of an increase from last year. But he's still an undersized guy, so running could get him in trouble if he takes a lot of hits because, you know, how durable will he be is a big question mark. Uh, you know, another question mark with Baylor, right? Pick this team not to perform too well this season just because they lost a lot, not just on defense, but in terms of skilled positions on offense. You know, look at running back Tay McWilliams. He's the presumable starter, but how much daylight will he have against a pretty good Baylor front? Now, last year, or a pretty good BYU front, rather, you know, Baylor last year had a great effort against the Cougars in the trenches, and they get back four starters here on an offensive line. It's phenomenal. Jacob Gall, Grant Miller, Connor Galvin at left tackle. Those guys are leading the way. Those guys are really good, and, you know, that's going to be a staple of this football team this season. They're phenomenal in the trenches this season. Uh, Tay McWilliams, though, he split carries last year, guys like Richard Reese, and then Kawhian Jones. Uh, you know, everyone got a little bit of work. McWilliams did lead the team with 12 uh, rushes, but he had 45 yards, which was fourth on the team. You know, so I want to see some more efficiency. Of course, just week one against the FCS school, not too worried. We're trying to get everybody involved, Craig Williams as well. So we're going to see who that number two back will be. Plenty of guys that could emerge here for that role. But they'll be running behind a phenomenal offensive line all season long, especially in this game. One big thing I want to see is, you know, uh, Monterey Willie Baldwin. You know, what his versatility will do for this football team. It was something I had circled in the preseason. This is a guy that's very talented. He had two carries for 46 yards and a touchdown. And he also led the team in receiving with four guys for 84 yards and another score. After that, though, not many proven commodities in the receiving core. You'd expect Baldwin to have a big-time season, get a lot of usage. Hal Presley, Jalen Ellis, you know, those are some guys that got involved last week. Drake Dabney at tight end. You know, Ben Sims is a veteran as well. So that's going to be a big issue this season, though. They don't really have the depth or the proven commodities or exactly the talent outside of Baldwin, at least at this moment in time, because uh, you have to see who's going to step up. This is going to be a big game for them because they're playing secondary. It's getting a lot of veterans back, and they're going to be looking for some payback after last year's game where they didn't play the best. Overall, this is a very sound Baylor offense, especially with the uh, upside that Blake Shapin comes with in this offensive line, you know, full of veterans. They're incredibly physical, so they're going to be leading the way for whoever is running the football and then whoever is getting touches in the ball, uh, you know, out wide. But I think Baldwin, he's going to be a big-time asset for them this season. That's something I'm expected to see on Saturday. Looking at the BYU offense, Jaron Hall, you know, he leads the way as a dual threat quarterback who is a good, smart downfield passer. You know, a lot of clean pockets for him last year. Uh, you know, he throws, he identifies one on one coverage and throws it to one and his guy can catch it. That's something you've constantly seen on film. It's an offensive line that I'm very high on coming into the season. They got most of their starters back. Blake Freeland and Clark Barrington on the left side, those are two of the nation's best at their position. Uh, and they also picked up Kingsley from Oregon, a slot in there at right tackle. So these guys are going to continue to grow in it last year. The Bears had their number. I think this is a good redemption game for them because that was, you know, back in October of last year. So it's been a while since these two played. And, you know, last week they looked pretty good as well against USF, dropping 50-plus points. Uh, Chris Brooks, I expected him to be a perfect replacement for Tyler Najir, Algeri, rather, because he was he's 6'1", 230, runs with authority behind his shoulder pads, and they got this offensive line pushing the way. You know, he had 135 yards and a touchdown on only 13 touches in his debut. Puka Nakua, though, three rushes, 76 yards, and two touchdowns. That's something I did not expect is to see him get involved like that as a rusher and then to have that kind of impact. He's a phenomenal pass catcher for them. He was one of the leading reception guys last season, 43 grabs for 800-plus yards. You know, Gunnar Romney, Keanu Hill, those guys as well, they're also big. Nila Poo, you know, those guys were big in catching the football. I think Poo's actually gone, actually. But um, Jackson McChesney, a running back. Uh, Kyoto at running back. You know, they got depth there. I like the depth at wide receiver as well. Um, these guys weren't exactly healthy last week, though, so that's something to watch. Uh, Hill did not have a lot of receptions. Romney, 
you know, they hope to have him back and healthy. Uh, Nakua, even though he had success, he was kind of beat up. And I don't think Hill actually recorded any grabs. But um, Isaac, he had one of them right here for 21 yards. It was a touchdown. Isaac Rex, though, a tight end. Uh, what was it, two years ago, they had, you know, numerous touchdowns, 12 of them actually as a freshman two years back. Usage was not there last year. That's a guy they're looking to get involved here, though. 6'6", 250, a red zone target. He could be a chain mover for them. They just got to be willing to use him. Uh, I like this offense all around. They have good guys at skilled positions. They got the depth. They got a good quarterback I'm very high on. I very much so watch, uh, enjoy watching Jaron Hall. And I like the left side of that offensive line ball together. I think it's a very well put together unit for this BYU football team. And we'll see what happens. Kalani Sitaki's group, these guys are going to have to lead the way. But more importantly, the defense will have to step up. We'll get to them in a minute. But first, the Bears. Dave Aranda's unit loses a lot coming into this season, though. They're still pretty dominant in the trenches. I picked up Jackson Player from Tulsa, a guy with double figure tackles for loss. See, Ica Ica is mixed in with him. They have a dominant presence at nose tackle. I don't exactly know what the game plan is going to be to get both of them on the field because, I mean, it's too hard to keep one of them off. But regardless, even if they're rotating, they're going to have two dominant forces here. And player, he stepped up with one and a half tackles for loss in his debut. Ika, this is a guy who gets his hands up to knock down passes. But more importantly, he's just a force in the middle, being 6'4", 350. Kind of a Vita Via type player. Like, of course, that's a bit of an exaggeration. But that's the kind of uh, you know style he brings to the table. So I love the interior there. Gabe Hall, he's a veteran edge rusher for them. Uh, he did half a sack last week. This is not too much of a defense that has a lot of experience, though. Uh, Cole Maxwell, he's a senior, along with TJ Franklin, coming off the edge. So they have some experience there. And then in the middle, Matt Jones was a breakout player for them a season ago. I like Dylan Doyle as well. He's been the leading tackler, it seems like, uh, each of his years here in Baylor you know, at Waco. You know, he's a senior now. The secondary is the biggest concern for me because they lost a lot of athleticism to the draft. Uh, same goes for at wide receiver, too. They lost a lot of speed, a lot of talent, you know, that's going to give the Cougars an edge downfield, at least in my opinion. You know, Dave Aranda, I think he'll figure things out, especially with uh, Christian Morgan, a senior safety leading the way. But for the most part, you got a handful of vet, you know, youthful guys in here. I do know Devin Neal's been around. Uh, Al Walcott he had some big plays for them last year. You know, I see Mark Milton's a senior as well, but I don't know how much playing time he's had. But BYU, they love to take strikes downfield, off play action especially. And I think that's one thing to watch is how this Baylor secondary does. We're going to learn a lot about them in this game. Because that was my biggest concern of them coming into the year. So this is going to be a big opportunity, win or lose, for Baylor. You know, we're going to learn about them in this contest. But overall, this is a good unit. they got a nice little front six that can get the job done. they got some tacklers, some dominant forces like Ica and Player. And then I like the veteran edge rushers. You know, they didn't have a big game last week. Only, you know, two sacks. Alfonso Allen, a safety, had one of those. This is one of the top sack-getting defenses in all of college football last year. So that's another part that we're going to have to watch for aggression. Good offensive line they're playing here. Uh, opportunity to kind of prove themselves early on in the season against a tough matchup. Baylor's defense, overall sound unit. Dave Aranda will figure things out, I think, but they might take a step back. We'll find out Saturday. Look at the BYU defense. You no, know, it's a deep front seven that has some good depth. They did allow 300 plus rushing yards to Baylor last year, though, but there's good size on the interior D line to match up, but they have to be more physical, and I expect them to do that. Caden Hawes, Gabe Summers, those guys on the interior are going to have to lead the way. I like Tyler Beatty as well. Uh, you know, more importantly, though, at linebacker, you know, Ben Bywater, Max Tooley, Keenan Philly. These guys are all veterans. And Philly last year, uh, you know, he had about, I think it was 31 tackles in three games, then he got hurt. And then, you know, after that, the defense just, they weren't exactly the same. They weren't struggling too bad compared to when he was there because they were not great uh, against Utah exactly early last season. But he was big for them, Philly. You know, 31 tackles, three games. He goes down. It allowed these other guys to go step up, like, you know, Peyton Willigar and Ben Bywater. So they have plenty of guys at linebacker. I don't know how they'll get them all on the field. Uh, this is an interesting defense, though, because they want a bunch of different schemes. They're a multiple team scheme here. Jackson Kafusi as well, another Kafusi brother. I didn't even know they had. Um, overall, this front six, seven, they're going to have to lead the way, whatever scheme they roll out. They just have to be more physical and stopping the run because this offensive line is legit nasty. And then kind of like the Baylor secondary, we're going to learn about the BYU one because they get everybody back. You know, remember, all 11 starters are back on this defense. Malik Moore, you know, he's still in learning the position there at safety. Caleb Hayes, a good corner from a season ago. They're going to be instrumental this year, especially in this game. You know, this unit cannot bite on play action or Baylor. You know, they're going to be right where they want to be, uh, which, you know, like kind of implies that the run game is going for the Bears. I think it's certainly possible, but a lot of learning really to be done in this game. Obviously, it's important who wins and who loses. I think for me, the biggest thing I'm watching is just both of these teams' defenses and how the offensive lines look. It leads us to team comparisons. Quarterback, I'm going to give Jaron Hawley edge for the Cougars. Uh, you know, last year he played more and he looked better. Chapin, he's pretty impressive so far in the small sample size. He'll eventually catch up, I say, but Hall right now, a good dual threat guy. At running back, I like Chris Brooks and the depth for 
uh, BYU, but Baylor, Tay McWilliams, Craig, McWilli- uh, Craig Williams, those guys have some pretty impressive talent that no one's really heard of. They're waiting to get unleashed. The pass catchers, outside of Baldwin, I'm not really sure who the trust for Baylor and BYU. I listed off a handful of guys that are going to get involved and make an impact. You know, they get three of the top four pass catchers back from a season ago, and that doesn't count Isaac Rex, who's been productive in the past. Offensive line, I don't think BYU's too far behind, but Baylor, they're one of the nation's best. Same on the D-line. It's not much of a debate, I don't think, with those two units. But don't sleep on the Cougars in those areas. Linebackers, I'm going to give the edge to BYU. It might seem crazy to some people because Baylor's middle of their defense is actually pretty good. It's quite solid. Jones, I expect him to continue to make leaps and bounds. While Doyle, he's been, you know, forever a good tackler of theirs, you know, a good producer for them. He's a versatile player that does a lot, but, you know, he had 10 tackles for loss last year. But overall, BYU, they had guys step up in the middle of their defense last year. While Philly was down, he's now back. They have some great depth, great starters. So I just think the linebackers, they have more players that are going to get involved in that area. I'm going to call the secondary even. Baylor, obviously, last year was one of the nation's top secondaries, as I kind of anticipated they would be. But again, they're kind of take a step back, I imagine, with the lack of uh, athleticism from a season ago. Uh, so I'm going to call this even. BYU, they, didn't, they were not very good against the pass last year, or the run. This defense kind of struggled in multiple areas, but um, they do have those senior leaders coming back. I like Hayes and Moore. Um, so I'm going to call it even, and we'll see at the end of the game who steps out and emerges as the better one. Final thoughts and the prediction on this one. You know, the keys to the game for Baylor, you know, prove the losses in the secondary don't matter versus a tough passing attack. I've been harping on it the whole podcast, feels like. And then utilize Monterey Baldwin, you know, that athletic pass catcher that gets involved as a runner as well. He's versatile, and you want to utilize that as much as possible, especially since the depth is not great at the position. BYU, you know, control the line of scrimmage much better than a season ago. That's really where it's going to start and end because they just got, uh, you know, demolished in that area by Baylor. It's possible it happens again because I think Baylor, if anything, got better in the trenches than they were a season ago. But I think BYU did as well. Being at home here, I'm going to pick them to win 23-17, a low-scoring contest, kind of like the Vegas total implies. Um, Whatever team can control the line of scrimmage better, really. I mean, that's, of course, a big key in every single game, but this one more importantly so Um, because BYU, they're going to want to keep this offense on the field, but if they're getting bulldozed back and they're, you know, in third and second and longs, whatnot, that's not exactly where they want to be, even though they have a good quarterback and get the job done with his legs and through the air. Uh, You know, they want to be ahead of the sticks, and they don't want to have to, you know, be forced to make big plays. You've seen that against Boise State last year where they were just turning the ball over so much because they were trying to do too much because they kind of had no choice. So I think they want to run the ball, get in play action, just clean pockets as where Hall really thrives downfield. So we'll see what happens in this game. Should be a fun one late on ESPN. Hopefully you stay up to watch it. I'm going to take the Cougars to win by six over the defending Big 12 champions. That's going to be it for today's episode, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.